The other day, Nikocado Avocado shocked the world with his comeback video because he was a completely different person from when we last saw him on YouTube. It was also amazingly timed as he dropped it right after Sunny V2's big video on him. And you can't really forget iNaber's seven hour long video on him. Dude was probably going for the Guinness World Record for longest commentary video. Wait, actually, I wonder which video is the longest commentary video. That should definitely be a Guinness segment. Either way, I feel like my editing team would jump off a cliff if I told him, hey, we're making a seven hour video today. So because I want them alive, this video is going to be a whole lot shorter than that. So last time we covered Nikocado Avocado, that was way back in 2022, as he posted this clip. I am always two steps ahead. This has been certainly the greatest social experiment my entire life. See, that's crazy. I don't know what he means by saying he's two steps ahead. Is he just doing this for views and money? Yes, probably. Is he making some crazy documentary behind the scenes? Maybe. But other than that, I have no idea what he means. So we've been aware that he was up to something behind the scenes. We just didn't know what. I was assuming back then it was some documentary, which might be true of his whole weight loss journey. But apparently he pre-recorded a bunch of videos, then posted them slowly for a little bit over a year until the catalog ran out at the end of April of this year. By that time, I guess we can assume that he wasn't quite ready to make his comeback as losing that amount of weight, that really takes some time. Even if he's on like Ozempic and does the gastric bypass surgeries, it's not like you get those results overnight. It will definitely be interesting to see if he talks about how he lost all the weight. But a lot of people say that Sunny V2's video has already aged poorly, which I'm a little mixed on because you can either argue and say, it was just bad timing or it was just in time. Obviously, it was bad timing that he posted this video right before Nico posted his video. It was perfect timing for Nico to post his video, but Sonny posted it just in time as well because if Nico posted his video first, Sonny would have probably had to scrap it or seriously rework it. But if we shift a little bit around the timeline here, I feel like Sonny's video is still somewhat relevant because the whole focus of Sonny's video was on Nico's video titled Bye. Because here, Nico was candid or seemingly candid as he revealed a lot about himself. And we thought this was filmed in April of this year, but instead it was apparently a little over a year ago. But either way, this is still the last video he recorded like this. I am just going to tell you right off the bat. I'm on the edge of a breakdown. Like, most likely by the end of this video or halfway through, I would be flipping out. And his meltdown was essentially that he hated his life, his finances, his job, and he revealed a lot of his videos were demonetized, thus making him way less money than what most people thought he was making off YouTube. I wish I could turn back the clock. I wish I could go back in time. I wish I would never have done YouTube. I wish I would have never decided that this would be a fun way to make a living, that this would be a fun way to have a life. This would be a fun way to provide for my family. That's what it was all really about. And it's so ironic, because if you knew, if you knew, I had goals, I had dreams, and I threw it all away to eat food. And the irony is, I've barely made any money for the past two, three years. Sonny also confirmed this in his video by testing to see if he got ads on his catalog. And obviously, Nico made a lot of money from YouTube, but not as much as many thought. What's a little sad is YouTube revenue can be extremely finicky and inconsistent, hence why many creators do sponsored content or make their own brands. Like, I made Mad City. Most people don't know why I have my background in all my videos. And the whole original joke was I often call myself a low budget talk show host. All the mainstream talk show hosts, they have some sort of expensive big city skyline behind them. And being raised in Lillehammer, Norway, it's not like I would have a relatable backdrop that people would recognize. You know, only a few people remember the 1994 Olympics and or the Netflix show Lillehammer. So I decided to go for the other streets I was raised on, which were the nostalgic toy car mats, except I couldn't find the original ones, only the Amazon version. So I used that for a couple of years until I figured out, hold on, I can put the universe that we're covering here on a mat and run with that. So then I finally made a custom one, got it up, and then suddenly a bunch of you guys started asking me, hey, where can I get one? At that point I realized, okay, we're on to some. <laughs> Matt, see. 
but how can I build something that can take its own life outside of a Tozy? And that's when I realized nobody's really taken the nostalgia from the toy car mats and brought it to a city near you. So I've launched Mad City alongside my best friend and my brother where we've now dropped the Atozi mat. It's not like you haven't seen it before because it's behind me in every video, but look at this bad boy. And then we have uh, a whole bunch of other ones like the Manhattan one or the New York City one, but we can basically only fit Manhattan on a mat. So we're probably gonna have to do a part two for Brooklyn and the other boroughs. And then we got LA here as well, which I think is pretty cool. And then we have many more cities coming like Washington DC and obviously all the other main US cities. Here's a sneak peek of that one though. But we've also realized that not everyone wants a massive carpet to hang on their wall or throw wherever. So we've also made mouse pads. Because again, there's not that many mouse pads that actually are large with a cool design and the attention to detail to where you actually have it braided. Because you know, everyone has had a mouse pad that started peeling up because they didn't braid it on the side. So with these, we also have the Atozi, the Manhattan one, the LA one, and then some other unique ones like this one we called Corporate America or the Mad City HQ. So if this sounds cool to you, you want another way to support the channel, feel free to go to mat.c, which will be in the top link down below. Bad city, baby. Without further ado, let's continue this video because in this video, he showed sadness for not continuing to pursue his music as many knew he was an extremely talented violinist and that he missed being respected and not looked at as some internet meme. It's a sad video to watch. And I guess it's also a little bit hard to tell if everything is true because things get very blurry with Nick. As we can confirm, a lot is true. We also believe that he plays a lot of stuff up for the viewer. So where is the line? In Oompaville's videos, he just came across as a method actor, a dude who was just living through his bit, and then you had some authentic moments shine through, which is why I'm confused people are calling him a genius for the stunt, because the reality is he started as a healthy YouTuber, then completely degraded and humiliated himself for years, putting on hundreds of pounds for people's entertainment and something a whole lot more cursed, which he really leaned into. But I'm not really gonna discuss that angle here on this channel because I would like this video to remain monetized. But then he came back skinny and he's like, I control the narrative. I'm always two steps ahead. No shit you control the narrative of your own life. The only thing he proved is how far people will go for attention and money on the internet. It's a stunning display of lack of care for his own life. Because as many of you guys know, he posted this the other day. So I am the villain because I've made myself one. And you will continue to consume these stories about me year after year after year for as long as I tell the internet that I am the villain. What in the theater kid is going on here? And I feel like I can kind of say that because I was a media and communication kid. I made hundreds of extremely cringe skit videos in high school. Either way, this is giving Lewis lit from Suits Energy. Stories that permeate and linger and infect the minds of the ants. Influence the ants. Brainwash the ants. You are the ants. Dude, if you do something laughably stupid on the internet, people are going to cover it and people are going to talk about it. It's not like there's too many people that have gone through his character arc. I hope he's not inspiring people to follow his footsteps because there can only be so many Nico Kados. And that did a lot of damage to his body, especially to get as far as he did in his career because he has uploaded, what, probably a thousand videos on YouTube, maybe more. No matter how you look at it, doing this to yourself for content will have long lasting consequences for your body. And it severely increases the risks for heart disease, cancer, joint problems, liver disease, kidney disease, gallstones, alters your brain chemistry, and so much more. And then you can't forget the excess skin that remains once you lose it all. While you can argue and say, oh, he made a bunch of money doing this to himself, you can also easily argue, is it worth it? I would never condone that as he simply damaged his body for attention and money. Today, I woke up from a very long dream and I also woke up having lost 250 pounds off of my body. Yet just yesterday, people were calling me fat and sick and boring. I do want to say good for him. Losing over 200 pounds is not easy, and it definitely added so many years to his life. But I also feel like a lot of the backlash he received over the years were from people who genuinely were sad watching him destroy himself for views. But 
Boring is definitely not an adjective I would use to describe Nikocado. People are the most messed up creatures on the entire planet. And yet I've still managed to stay two steps ahead of everyone. I'm so proud of him for knowing his next move before other people. This whole situation is just such a weird flex. He tested the limits of how much he could destroy his own body. And then he finally course corrected and he was like, ha ha, it was all a social experiment. But I mean, hey, you got to give it to him because the comeback worked extremely well for him as he gained 33 million views on his comeback video as of recording this video. But some may be asking, what did he do after the intro? Well, he continued where he left off, eating an outrageous portion of food. So I guess the next question is, will the cycle continue? Who knows? But he's now posting all over the place that he is two steps ahead. Two steps ahead. I am always two steps ahead. This has been the greatest social experiment for my entire life. It's gripping to observe all these unwell, disoriented beings roam the internet in search of stories. Thirsty for a distraction from time unspent, spoiling their minds, yet stimulating them at the same time. It's brilliant. And it's dangerous. I feel as if I'm monitoring ants on an ant farm. All these little consumers, all of these lost and bored people, people consuming anything that they're told to consume. So I am the villain because I've made myself one. And you will continue to consume these stories about me year after year after year for as long as I tell the internet that I am the villain. And this one is definitely way more cursed. Papa John's Pizza. Papa John's Pizza. Two steps ahead. I'm always two steps ahead. Oh, except people actually predicted this. But sure, congratulations for being two steps ahead of your own life. I do genuinely want to congratulate him for losing all that weight, though, because that is definitely not an easy thing to do. Hopefully, the cycle just doesn't repeat, but who knows what will happen. If it's entertaining, we'll cover it. And again, if you want another way to support the channel, feel free to check out Matt City in the top of the description down below and in the pinned comment. We're also dropping like so many more cities very soon and also some, some clothing collections for each of the cities. This is like a, a sample of one of them. So, uh, so yeah, much more to come. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.